So Marrow was your primary source of reference. Uh, did you watch all the videos? Oh, uh, sir, most of it, sir. I hadn't planned on watching all the videos initially, but then I started falling in love with uh, the way teachers are teaching and the concepts and everything. It was super conceptual and uh, I started liking it. One, I want to make this point that one particular subject, I know it's like, uh, it's obvious that uh, everyone uh, thinks medicine and marrow is like, there are 200 plus videos in medicine. And, and even I got scared and I thought I'll skim through in a rapid course or something like that. But then I, I watched a few videos and uh, personally, I I really like Sir's approach. Like you can see that he teaches in a very disorganized way. One, he starts from the last or somewhere here and there and here and there. And like, but in the end, he puts the point across. And I think that's what necessary because in the exam also, you'll get questions from here and there and your mind should work in such a way that you can link from one corner to the other to the other. And one more thing is that he teaches in a level that's super speciality kind of level, you know, he teaches in that level. And it's a very unpopular opinion. I understand that a lot of people hate that, but I think that's what's necessary, you know, something that goes over your head, you'll try really hard to understand what this, what sir is telling. So if you yeah. kind of like, you know, study in this level, you can get your, at least the basic questions, right? Which these are the questions that come in the exam. So to get these right, you need to study at this level. So I really like sir's approach. Yeah, I think so. His clinical approach is why students are a good fan of Dr. Uh, Rakesh. Any Definitely. other faculty members who you would like to mention? Sir, I would like to mention you, sir. And you are my favorite teacher. And I'm not saying this because you are interviewing me. This is my genuine, uh, genuine thing. Uh, I'm telling that because your the way you teach is like so perfect. Like you, you make surgery revisable in two days, sir. And you haven't missed out on any important point for the exam. And surgery is such a subject where if you delve into surgery, you can take days together to finish. And you need that particular, you know, concise version. I think you give the best in that. And you, you know, very structured and everything. That's perfect, sir. And and you can see it like you and Rakesh are at like two polar ends of the spectrum. Like, sir is very disorganized. It is from here and there. And you, you are very organized, very structured. But then both of you are like awesome for me because I like the way you guys explain the concepts and everything. So, so it's Thank like you. every teacher is different in that in that kind of way. Like, and you know, uh, one more teacher, Manisha, ma'am from ENT, mm -hmm. uh, she as she teaches, she keeps revising the same thing again and again. So, like in one lecture, she would have revised the same line four or five times, and I didn't really feel the need to you know revise it again. Mohan sir from psychiatry, he would actually act like the patient and uh, you know, that's a psych patient. So, I don't know, it, it kind of sticks in your head. So, that's why I kind of like watching the videos a lot. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rohan Kandelwal, your marrow surgery faculty. And I have the honor of introducing Dr. Arjun to all of you. Dr. Arjun has secured a rank 10 in this year's INICET exam and what's even better is that he had a rank of 1 lakh in last year's NEET exam and now he has improved it to a rank 10 in this year's INICET exam. So he's had an incredible journey over the last one year. So it'll be great if he could share his thoughts regarding his journey and you all can learn from that. Dr. Arjun, over to you. So thank you so much, sir. First of all, this is super exciting that I'm getting to uh, that I'm getting interviewed by the legend himself. So you're yeah, someone I really look up to, and uh, this is like super special for me because it always felt like it was something like a fantasy or something. You know, I used to find what what, uh, what must be going through the toppers' minds when they're interviewing and stuff. And I'm here, and uh, this really feels super special. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Dr. Arjun, uh, you had a rank of 1 lakh in last year's NEET exam, that is 2020 NEET exam, right? And you have changed it to a rank 10 in a year's time. Yes, what sir. first thing which I want to know is that because a lot of students ask us that, uh, you know, what goes through the mind of a middle ranker or a ranker who hasn't scored really well in one of the exams? Is it possible for them to turn things around and get a top 10 rank? Well, you've already done that. 
so first tell me about the mindset change what happened post the neat exam which propelled you towards this rank okay so so firstly let me go through how all the preparation started and everything so i am from bangalore india i did my mbbs from esi medical college it's a government medical college and uh, d- uh, during my second and third year i joined a foundation course well it was mostly i joined because of peer pressure you know i saw one person joining i saw the second person joining and i felt like even i have to join because i might miss out on something so even i joined but the problem was from my side that i didn't have any drive i didn't have any intent so my uj life was super chill at that time so i didn't really attend the more than the classes i would attend fests and you know i would uh, go for extra curricular activities as such and back at that time i made really bad notes and i wish i did better notes because i could have read that later and so third year and fourth year finished i went into my internship in internship i had a lot of fun i did attend internship properly but i did have a lot of fun because i didn't have the you know uh, i didn't have to prepare for pg because i thought i definitely thought i'll do it after internship so i finished internship uh during internship i went and gave the neat pg you could say it was 0% preparation and i got a rank of 1 lakh so it didn't really so bother me at that let me interrupt you i'm sorry what i want to know is so when you appear for the neat exam you did not prepare anything at all you just went uh, yes, and gave the exam no yes sir so the little notes that i had made it definitely helped me to clear my ug exams but right. i didn't follow up on that and, and didn't revise that so obviously it would have gone out of my mind so it was uh, you could say it was 0% preparation in, uh, with all honesty so i went and gave it like that and i attempted only 220 questions out of 300 so what was the reaction of your friends and family post this 1 lakh rank uh, and what was your reaction to this uh, rank for me my personal reaction it didn't really affect me one bit in the beginning okay? because i knew i didn't prepare and getting a rank this low i knew after this the only direction i can go is all the way up from here but but then a few of my friends came to know about my rank and uh, they seemed very disappointed more than me so i kind of felt like uh, i could have done better maybe and stuff and after that for a lot of people when they asked my rank i would say i didn't even i didn't give the exam for a lot of people, i would say because i didn't want any kind of reactions from them i didn't want any awkward situation happening there or something sure it was like so that, that so yeah so as an eye opener the rank was an eye opener not in a negative manner but i mean as so, an eye opener kind of like that how better. i can improve how i can improve from this phase definitely yeah. sir okay. how i could improve so yeah as i was saying in, internship finished and then i opened the foundation notes whichever i had made i thought i'll complete the notes and stuff but it since it was it had been almost 2 3 years since i had written those notes and i didn't follow up with revision it felt like it wasn't my notes it was i'm reading someone else's book and with bad handwriting and i didn't really understand what i had i had only written so i felt that it felt alien to you the notes of your very much sir very much so so dr arjun is making a very important point here the point is that if you don't revise the notes which you've made the notes will feel alien to you and they won't even feel like your notes so make sure whatever source you're using if you're making notes if you're taking down notes you keep on revising them so dr arjun now is the very interesting phase of the journey where you had a 1 lakh rank it served as an eye opener for you and your old notes were not of not of much use to you right now so yes, how sir. did you approach the year and what did you use as your primary source of information so after internship i started researching uh, and the pandemic happened especially so uh, we understood that everything is going to be online so i started yeah. researching and asked asking my seniors friends and everyone uh, which would be a good uh, option for me and uh, it was most of them told marrow but a few of them told marrow is super vast but like uh, i thought okay whatever i'll get from it let me just see uh, let me just take it because the majority are telling me to take this so okay. i took up marrow so initially when i took up marrow 
I didn't have any idea about how perfect it is or how good it might be or I didn't have any expectations from it. But I just started uh, with Maro and uh, I, I, uh, and as I was going through, I felt that it was pretty good. And uh, I didn't plan on watching all the videos or something. I thought I might be short on time because Maro had a lot of videos. So, but then I started it and I felt like I need the whole the entire thing because I wanted to understand the concept properly because my concepts were pretty weak. It was like I knew only bits and pieces of everything and I didn't, I felt that concepts is what gets you through the exam even if you don't know the content. If you have the right mindset and the concept, it, you can rule out options and get the right answer. So because of that, I started my preparation and initially for the first subject, for the first few days, I started making my own notes. But then it took me so, so much time that I uh, felt that no, if I make notes, it will take me two years to do that. And I uh, felt that I needed a quick uh, solution to this. So I ordered the Mar- Maro notes like uh, a few days into my preparation. It Because of the pandemic, it kind of came like pretty late. So it, so I was just watching video, uh, finished videos for two, three subjects and then Maro notes came. And I think that was like super special for me. And I think this might not work for everyone, you know. Uh, a lot of people prefer their own handwritten notes. But right. Maro yeah. notes is different in such a way that it they give a lot of space here and there so that you can put in your own points. And mm-hmm. have, it's it's kind of colorful and they've written in like handwritten type of thing. And at, by the end of my first reading, it felt like these notes are my notes. Like I've written it. So, then, so it's like I'm breaking a myth that people say you can't achieve a good rank that you take printed notes, you have to make your own notes. It's completely different. Right. It's your own opinion and perspective. If you believe that it's your notes, right. <laughs> it'll be your notes, definitely. So then you can rely on narrow notes, which are ready made, and they help you to revise facts quickly. Now, Arjun, I would like to ask you any other advantage which you found with printed notes. And also one more thing, please tell all the users how many standard textbooks did you read during your MBBS? So that's another question which students ask us that are the videos enough or do we need to read standard textbooks as well? Yes, sir. First up, firstly about the notes, one more point I want to add is that the images. If you make a handwritten notes, you, you can't obviously copy the images and you have to go to another place where you, you get a PDF of images and then you won't have that link or something. When you're reading a topic, the image is right next to you there in the notes. So you kind of have that mental link or connect that you can do. I think this is one advantage of uh, notes. Obviously, for a majority, 99% of the people, handwritten notes works. But for that minority, don't try to, if printed notes works for you, like it, how it work for me, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. You can definitely achieve a good rank. Coming to the standard books, sir, I uh, didn't really, my UG life was super chill. So I didn't really read any standard books as such, mostly Indian authors only. And like I used to just put in a couple of all nighters and then clear my exams. And then my, those foundation notes, I used that to clear my exams. It was pretty much that. You, know, you could say I didn't really read I, any standard books. But that was a super big mistake I did. Okay, but I definitely don't want any of you to do that. I definitely recommend reading standard books because once I finished my first reading after the videos, I end up, just to see the hang of it, I, I saw the a few standard books, one or two papers, just to see if it's there. That's when I actually understood that to read standard books, you have to have a little idea about what you're reading. Just by directly going to the standard books, it's hard. So as and when during your UG life, if you after reading the Indian standard textbooks, just once go through the standard books because your concepts will become super strong at that time and that, that will definitely help you in the long run. And I am that's something I'm not really proud of that I didn't read any standard books and I wish I could change that but uh, yeah, it's fine. So good advice, but, if you have time, definitely read standard textbooks and that's what all of us recommend. But again, if but you're if running out of time, you can rely on the Marrow videos and notes and if you're running short of time, you can even rely on the printed notes and you don't need to make notes on your own. Yes. If now, you uh, if you've not read any standard textbooks till now, definitely funny for like a post intern and you didn't read any standard textbooks, you can definitely achieve a great rank. The only reason is because doesn't matter which platform you choose, almost all teachers, they refer standard textbooks. They refer so many articles and they'll concise everything and put 
give the notes for you and i think that's more than enough for you so did it's you watch a lot of videos at uh, 2x speed um yes sir i felt like it was kind of slow for me 1x not all the videos at 2x so teachers would talk really slow 2x otherwise uh, other teachers at 1.5x it was definitely between 1.5 to 1.8 somewhere like that because i think that's ideal speed otherwise you can't really complete the if you're in ug you can complete the videos otherwise it's hard to complete the videos one main point that i would like to stress upon to all of you who are watching is that oh before watching a video and i did this too that you'll actually you'll start before you expect something from a teacher and you'll start watching the video with a predetermined mindset that this is what i want from the teacher whether they are good or not in the subject or something like that what if i get a better teacher from somewhere else you you'll a lot of things run in a student's mind you know and then you start watching the videos and then you'll start comparing the previous faculty you've seen and this faculty and you'll think that okay, this sir should have thought that way or something like that and this i'm guilty of it myself in the beginning i would do like this but i advise all of you please don't do that go and start watching the videos and making your notes with a completely clear mindset without expecting anything and you'll understand that each teacher has their own way of explaining the concepts they have their own way of their approach to questions the strategies the uh, you know different pandas mnemonics they give and i think you should uh, you know embrace that and uh, take it into your own plan and like see what works for you uh, which teachers approach to questions works for you and uh, if it if this particular teacher's plan works for you you can use that into your own plan you know at the end of 19 subjects you'll have 19 different teachers telling you concepts in a different way approach to questions in a different way and this is the time when you have to take all of that and then formulate your own plan see what works for you and uh, follow the approach to questions whichever you like or something like that and this is uh, please go with a clear mind and don't start uh, thinking i expect this from that teacher is not teaching this way that way just every just try to take in whatever extract whatever you can from what they teach sure. it'll work just for you okay perfect so let's get back to your journey you started in march and you started watching the videos along with the videos were you doing question bank yes or no definitely, definitely sir you were like okay yes sir. so yes so now you can elaborate on that what i want to know so videos plus first time question bank how much time did it take you to finish that so i started in march i mm-hmm. i planned about 6 months I, i wanted to finish by august or something okay. uh, but but then uh, medicine i planned for 10 days it took me more than a month so and the pharmacology took me about 15 days because i was weak in that so i had I, i took an extra month in the end so i finished by september so you could say about 7 months so 7 and months you finished the entire q bank and the videos you had finished videos. majority of the videos and these 6 months you were sitting at home and you were studying yes sir otherwise and what was your average uh, study output a day so in the first month i started with 4 hours sir in the first week okay. second week slowly after 2 months it became 6 to 8 hours Mm-hmm. and by the time i finished my first reading it was 8 to 10 hours and like in the recent 6 months it went up to 12 hours and i consistently maintained it that way so very important point which dr arjun makes right supposing if you start going to the gym or if you start exercising initially when you start exercising your capacity is not very good but if you keep on practicing again and again your capacity keeps on increasing it's the same with studies as well if you do it in a disciplined manner repetitively you can concentrate for longer periods and you can see from Definitely. march from 4 hours he went up to 10 to 12 hours by the time and some people can do till 16 hours sir if 16 yeah. hours you can concentrate properly it's your advantage some people can do 8 hours 8 hours of productive work go for it see what works okay. for you for me 12 hours was the max i could go i did till 12 hours so that's But another very important thing: six months is enough to finish all the videos and the Q Bank once, right? So those who are say preparing for next year's exams, don't give up hope. You still have a lot of time if you are regular and if you plan your studies well, like Dr. Arjun did. You can still achieve your goal. Okay, Dr. Arjun. So uh, let's come to GTs. When was the first time you appeared for a grand test after your NEET 2020 result? 
the first time was uh, after i completed about 3 4 subjects sir in the first month the end of the first month of my preparation and what was your rank at that my first gt i think about 10000 or something like that it was consistently okay. between five, in the first 3 months my ranks were 5 to 15000 because the more subjects slowly i started reading my gt went on improving i gave one a month in the first uh, reading time definitely one one gt per month during my first reading and so, along with that i was to solve the q banks as well like after each topic solve the q banks if there's ve- ve- anything very important or ha- with hashtag neat or ems and if i felt that it's important i would add the uh, thing into my notes or the mcq id the notes so q bank when you used to solve them after reading the subject and after watching the videos what was the app what was the percentage of questions that you used to get correct so since it was a very recent memory for me Mm. uh like i've done the video and that day only i'm doing the q bank so mm. my percentage would would be above 80 definitely because it's like very recent memory so but my main name was not uh, my percentile because i knew this if i solve this after one month it will be less than 50% of the questions i'll get it right but my main name was whatever extra i can add or highlight or important stuff i can take that which is not there in notes and at that point of time the q bank was super vast i felt like there is so much of info and then at last in the last one month i felt like i know each and everything i don't even have to go through the explanations i, so I mean you, you, you have to be consistent like it might seem very overwhelming in the beginning but oh uh, you'll get through it sure so you appeared for one grand test a month and your next exam was the inict in november so leading yes. up to it can you please share with everyone how your gt ranks were increasing and at what time uh, did you feel that you know things are doable you can achieve a good rank yes sir initially when i got 10000 it didn't really bother me because as you know i started from the bottom like and then right. i went all the way up like 1 lakh so 10000 also was a big thing for me okay so as and when i started uh, finishing one subject and the other i started forgetting the starting subjects which i had read so this is where gts came into play because at least they'll make you revise a part of that subject which i uh, i might have forgotten it'll make your work easier later slowly my ranks started going from 10 9 8 7 something like that by the end of my first reading i was within 5000 by then and i didn't give the mid year exams during that time because i felt like i was unprepared and there's no point in giving it and anyway the recall will come if i want to see the questions so i didn't really bother giving it and uh, this is uh, my november nict i gave next So your rank was ten thousand at the start, and by September you were around five thousand rank in GTs. Now yes, you sir. said that GTs help you revise a portion of the subjects which you read earlier. So what was your analysis strategy or revision strategy when it came to a GT? Because a lot of students are confused about this. Did you revise each and every question, or only the ones which you were getting wrong? So for the sub. Uh, In initially in the starting time uh, re- reviewing a gt would take me like super long like 2 to 3 days you could say by the end of my preparation it became 2 to 3 hours but i did, it didn't really bother me because i was gaining knowledge from it and whichever subjects i had finished i i went a little detail into those questions whichever subjects i hadn't finished i just skim through it like know the question and answer because i thought i'll read that later during the notes later so and i'll share a picture of the my progress in the gts in one of the groups so all of you can see how I, how my gt scores were and i started my revision from october for this one my first so week. before the inict november exam did you finish one revision as well no sir i didn't i started oh. my i had planned to do actually two revisions before inict but i ended up doing only half a revision by then like half the subjects and what was your november inict rank I got a rank of two thousand one hundred, sir. Two thousand. So from one lakh to two thousand. I mean, that is also a major improvement. And did that serve as a, a boost to you that you know you you've achieved you've gone from one lakh to two thousand, and yes, you thought that you can probably go from two thousand to a top hundred rank as well? Yeah, hundred. I don't know, sir. But like it was. For my first revision, I took about ninety days because I, it felt like I had forgotten a major chunk of what I'd done in my this one. 
but it, it kind of would be in your memory you just have to review it so i took about 90 days which is not very healthy because that it's very ideal for your first revision to be 45 to 60 days so that's why i could only do review half of it for my nam by nicet and with that i got a rank of 2100 and i felt that oh this is like super special for me and maybe in my next exams i i aim for neat actually i thought i'll get a decent rank and get a college somewhere here or there or at least a government college but that really propelled me you know that 2100 rank i knew that i'd worked hard it's not by fluke because my gts just before the ilc ct was like about 1000 to 2000 and the maro gts were super hard during that time so i felt that yeah i can do this i can aim for a top 1000 rank at least uh in uh, neat pg yeah. and uh, i didn't really bother about aims because aims was in may of the next year neat pg i'll finish but then it kept uh, postponing and finally it let me uh, done so perfect so very important point here look we always think that momentum only plays a role in sports no momentum also plays a huge role in competitive exams and as you can see dr arjun's rank was gradually improving and the november result served as a great boost catalyst for him. yeah that was the ideal stimulus for him to you know prepare well and to get the rank which he's got now so it is a momentum game that is why gts are important keep on appearing for your gts because if you see a steady improvement in your gt rank that would push you to do even better in yeah. case you're getting up you're going down in your gts i uh, i'd advise you guys to stop look back at what might what you might be going wrong because, because a lot of factors will come into play a steady improvement will really boost you but a lot of people won't improve they'll reach a plateau but just sit back and think how can i how can i, how can I improvise how can i imbibe other qualities in, into my strategy how, how my plan must change a little you know not completely but you can try improving a little and if that works for you stick to it perfect so dr arjun uh, your first revision now got over in december am i correct oh uh, half of december so yes half of By december half of so um did the postponement in the exam was it a blessing in disguise for you so that you could revise more and uh, improve your rank even further sir so right at this moment i feel yeah definitely obviously but at that point of time I felt that uh, to uh, I can revise once more before uh, neat exam and because I had done a 90 day revision it was like the concept was super strong for me at that that time so I could do two revisions and I'll give neat pg and I I might get a great good uh, decent rank like within 5000 I could hope for and get a college so it kind of uh, I don't know it was maybe a blessing in disguise like without me knowing it once it got postponed even I felt bad but i felt that yeah it could have been worse man i mean a lot of people might be going through a lot of shit and like you know uh, some might be affected with covid and everything and and i felt that yeah it could have been worse for me so let me just take it like let me not show any emotion with this postponement let me just go continue what i'm doing the second postponement was really horrible for me converted that initial setback of postponement into a positive factor for you yourself and yes, it helped you to revise more and secure the current rank so yes, it's about sir. mindset as well i mean you can either take it in a negative manner or you can channelize the same energy into a more positive intent yes sir definitely sir okay. right so one more thing which i want to highlight which dr arjun has said first reading took 6 months along with video so that's 6 into 30 is 180 second revision i mean the first revision which happened 90 days so half the time right the second revision dr arjun how much time did that take so in the it you could say mid december and uh, somewhere by the neat pg date i had planned to finish it but the postponement came a few days before so that's when i slacked off so you could say if the exam happened i would have finished it by the exam maybe 30 days but mm-hmm. i took about 45 days half of that again Perfect. So what he is trying to highlight is that every subsequent reading, you are reducing the time by half, and that is a very important thing for all of you to understand. So when you are making a planner, that is how you should plan. That if X amount of time you are taking for the first reading, X by two for the first revision. It might X work differently two. for everyone. This is yes, what works for me. But it's yes, correct. But this is what we've seen over the years, and I think so. It's a It's a good enough figure to chase and to yeah, make a plan accordingly, 
okay yeah whatever works for okay. you that's my advice yeah. yeah perfect okay so now let's focus on what did you do in the first revision what did you do in the second revision because this is what students ask us that what should we revise so yes sir how did you plan your first revision and second revision um in my first i did all the subjects subject wise right in my first reading my first revision also was subject wise from and uh, at this time i done already done the q bank and i kind of had an idea about all the questions and and at that point i was bookmarking almost everything whichever like even little if i didn't understand i would bookmark it and like if i can't remember something bookmark it so at the end of my first reading after my i finished one round of q bank i had like 8000 bookmarks or something like that so in my first revision i didn't solve the q bank again i cleared the q bank and uh, did only the high yield uh, stuff like instruments ecg cpr something with uh, i felt that i might be weak at so you could say in the first round of cubank i did 700 modules in my uh, second round i did about 100 modules that time in my second revision i started uh, going through the bookmarks and uh, try to lessen it but because of lack of time i couldn't uh, unmark the bookmarks i started unmarking the bookmarks in my third revision because by by now i think my concepts were kind of solidified and i felt that yeah this this was so simple why did i bookmark this or something like that so i i kept the bookmarks very like concepts which might have i might forget very important facts that i might forget something like that so i reduced the bookmarks to half by then from 8000 to 4000 and every alternate revision i did i kept reducing and at last before the exam i had about 1500 bookmarks excellent point so so each revision quick revision of the notes and you do the bookmark mcqs try to reduce the bookmark mcq number with every subsequent revision where did custom modules and pearls fit into the scheme of things so one more point is that during this revision we since we had uh, it got got postponed every alternate revision i would uh, reduce the bookmarks but for someone who is preparing from now every revision you can reduce the bookmarks coming to what you asked about sir about uh, custom modules and pearls uh i didn't really solve the custom modules because most of the questions were coming from the q bank which i had already done yeah. so i tried one or two so it didn't really help me but pearls are this like the x factor and if you make the best use of it your rank will completely shoot up and trust me this will work for everyone but how to use the pearls is that not not to go through the pearls from first to last most of the pearls you would have seen as a link in the q bank explanation itself and you'll have an idea about it so don't read the pearls in one go read the pearls as in when you're solving the q bank or something and important pearls you can mention them the number in the notes go through the pearls whenever it's uh, necessary if you're running short of time in the end you can read through the go through the pearls it's like a summarized version of everything so dr arjun uh, again the inicd exam got called off a few days before the exam date and then you had around 40 days before uh, the exam what did you do in those 40 days how did you a tackle the stress of constant postponement b how did you maintain that gt rank because another thing which i have seen is that once students start doing well sometimes you know that this uh, big occasion pressure which comes in and they falter during the exam so how did you maintain uh, the constant uh, rank in gts and what was your strategy in the last 40 days i think the uh aims date was somewhere around may and at that time i was like in in my fourth revision so when it, it got postponed i felt really bad because four revisions i thought was like super super cool i can get a great rank with four revisions so and, and uh, felt that i wait this time what was your gt rank by the time you started your fourth revision what was your gt rank uh, i had broken to the top thousands by then sir within 1000 perfect. perfect not within 500 somewhere you could say 300 to 1000 Okay. and this is the time because it got it got getting postponed i thought like i should explore different as different platforms also so i started started giving gts from different different platforms wherever it was free and i i bought a booster pack of 10 gts also and like like you could say i gave gts from every possible platform and was your rank similar across platforms definitely not i was scoring great in maro because it was my source and uh, almost similar questions the way they frame it similar you could say i was getting a lesser rank in the other platforms but was that didn't really bother me or was it a huge difference uh, or a... 
So if I got 500 in Maro, I would have got 1000 in that one, something like that. Or 300 here and 600 there, something like that. So I finished my fourth revision. This this was the point that really annoyed me because this was where I got changed my mindset completely because it got postponed right at the right just before the exam, I think two three days, and I was go, going pretty well with my revisions and all, and that's when I slacked off a little, you could say. Uh, and I think that happened with everyone. Everyone slacked off during that forty days time or something. And but how did you uh, bounce back? That's what I want to know. Last forty days, how did you bounce back? Yes, uh, that that time I was fed up with my notes also. I, I didn't want to read it again, and so I started doing questions from here and there. Give give mini tests, some GTS. Somehow try to pass the time so that before they announce the next date, I can buckle up. You know, uh, now only if I start off like will peak up and then I might lose steam in the end. So I started going slow from there. And uh, this was a moment like uh, this phase was uh, kind of other than my preparation, it kind of gave me that time to think, you know, time to uh, contemplate and you know think about my think about a lot of aspects other than my you know uh, preparation, like life in general and like uh, my future, my goals and like what what I must do and you know it gave me a lot of time to improve as a person. So introspection gave you a time, a lot of time for introspection, and yes, uh, you know I think so. It must have cleared up the goals which you had in your mind. So yeah. when the exam yeah. date was announced, you were ready to go then. Yes, sir, definitely. And I I want to say that my UG life was super chill, and I mean super chill as in I was super chill. And internship was also I ha- I enjoyed my internship definitely. So I was a super social person back then. I am now also, but like. My social life and my chill life had to take a backseat during this preparation. It, it was really like hard for me, you could say. I, I mean, there are your many reasons for Your famous quote that friend circle will reduce and the dark circles will increase. <laughs> so that's, that's what you're trying to say. I think that definitely happens, sir. You lose a lot of, you a lot of friends and you lose contact with a lot of people. I mean, you cut off, but that's definitely okay because your friends will understand that you have your goals in mind. They'll always come back. And I'm really uh, happy that I got a really good friend circle. Uh, they were all very supportive of me. And I, I cut off contact with a lot of my closest of friends, but I think they understood. You know, one week before my INICT exam, uh, my best friend was going to the US and uh, I couldn't meet him because I couldn't afford to lose a day one week before. And But they understood and they were very supportive. So I think support, emotional support is also very much necessary. Very important. Very, very important point which you're making. Emotional support and surrounding yourself with the right uh, type of people who understand you. Yes, and the keep the negative ERP aside. Correct. Yes, Correct. So last two questions. Uh, first, I'll ask you your mindset, how you coped up during the pandemic. And then last, what should be done in the last week to 10 days leading up to the exam? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So what you would like to tell what and also sir what you would like to advise the people that, that is last your your message to the students is the last uh, thing sir. very last part if yeah. you want i can add about how, what features you liked in maro and all that features so how i use the bookmarks the three colored bookmarks to, you want bookmark you've already mentioned what i want to highlight one thing which i want to ask you is that uh, you said that the content was vast. So, in hindsight, do you think that vast content gave you an edge over other people? Definitely, very much, sir. Okay. So, I'll ask you this question, then I'll ask you the two questions, and then we'll end. The uh, pa- how the pandemic affected, you know, sir. Correct. Like correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Dr. Arjun, right at the beginning, you told me that uh, you found the content in Marrow before you started preparing to be vast. In hindsight, now that you've secured this rank, do you think that vast content gave you an edge over other people? Yes, sir. Definitely. I think that's what gave me an edge. Initially, it might seem too overwhelming for everyone. Like the the amount of content Maro has, I think it's comparatively a lot compared to other platforms. And uh, we just keep going through, keep pushing hard, keep hustling. And I think you'll come to a point where at last you'll see that your concepts are super strong and you know almost everything that might be asked. And it's because of Maro, if you study whatever is very important, you might forget what's important also. But in Maro, it's like you study next level and uh, all the questions that might appear, basic stuff, you'll it'll definitely uh, stay in you. And 
during the course of your revision for me you could say that as and when i kept on revising I, i was forgetting a lot of stuff in such a way that i was purposely losing a lot of info because i would come to know what was important like if i in the first two revisions if i read something i would read from you know line to line and understand everything but then slowly i understood that okay this this concept i know overall picture i know so i don't have to know fully in detail about this so slowly slowly yeah. came to a point where each round of my revision came in filter out definitely sir and i think filtering out is very much important and i did came right. to a point where 30 days were was the minimum i needed for revision 20 to 30 days and i couldn't go less than that and i think maro is so vast that uh, even 30 days might seem very less for you so in hindsight it's very important and one thing is that try to do an integrated revision take subjects like take six subjects physio patho pharmacology pediatrics radio and medicine integrate these in such a way that you do it system wise like cns cvs rs rheumat blood and everything like that but that is definitely during revision and that's what you're trying to highlight first time yes, you did subject wise while revising you you use the from my third revision and the third sir every time okay. it got postponed started with an integrated approach it'll give you a holistic thing you know once you read physio and then after one week if you read patho you can't really link up everything put it together one it'll give you a solid concept you'll have a complete understanding of the entire system two will save you lots and lots of time because a lot of topics will get repeated you can save a lot of time please try this your rank will shoot up definitely so dr arjun the pandemic has been difficult for everyone how did you cope up during uh, the pandemic both mentally and physically yes sir being at home like i feel like i was very less affected compared to someone else like i've seen people losing their like very dear ones and i've seen people uh, losing their lives too and and like a, a lot of people were got the virus uh, the infection and like a lot of people went to work and still try to study and like make make it and i i really felt bad like if this this affects me for me only it affected so much like comparing with others like it could have been much worse for me so i always try to take in a positive way my approach was like uh, whatever happens it could have been worse you know this happens and it it could have been worse definitely so i always try to keep positive mindset i try to stay away from the negativity you know if uh, something's putting you down i try to stay away from it i stayed away from negative clips you know something uh, stuff like that so that you know it will definitely affect your mindset when you're preparing and you don't need that you always have to surround yourself with positive people keep all posi- try to be as positive as as much as possible because it might look hard for you everybody has a breaking point you know uh, so uh, i i'd say like try to reach out to someone close to you a friend or, a, or your family or or you know if it goes to the extreme please talk to a therapist or psychiatrist and don't like self medicate or something and this is something i'm not really proud of because even if i did go through something i would try to handle it on my own but it definitely helps if you talk it out to someone you know and uh, it'll help you a lot very important point which you make i guess the biggest thing is acceptance uh, to realize that something is going wrong and then to reach out to somebody is very important so dr arjun it's been a pleasure talking to you and to know your journey from 1 lakh to rank 10 that's been an amazing journey and thank you for sharing it with us uh, before yes, we end uh, any final words of advice uh, to other students who are still preparing definitely sir uh, please consider this journey like you're not in a jail but like you're uh, you know you get an opportunity to learn 19 subjects in a way like you're reading standard textbooks because all the teachers will teach you, you know, from the standard textbooks itself so in the end you should it should be something like you you're really proud of like no matter what rank you get be proud that you went through you got through this and like you're happy you're you you you're better you have better knowledge and you turned out to be a better as a person and like if you are taking a gap year like me uh, and not in internship uh, just try to use this phase like you know to think in the uh, think back on your goals and contemplate and like uh, you know like how i said my social life took a back and there might be different priorities for you just try to keep your priorities and like humility is something that doesn't come to me naturally but i i try to uh, you know improve every day as a person evolve as a person and i think that's something everyone should do seeing a gap year think about all that because definitely you'll have a better approach positivity in your life and about the strategy what you have to do i think whatever your plan you make you uh, whenever you see the toppers interviews 
you might see that i absolutely hated the top interviews because everyone mentioned standard books and with all honesty they did read standard books and they were very honest with that but i hated it because i didn't read that and i felt that i'm missing out on something so please don't feel that way and uh, you know you will definitely do it so this is my advice do finish your uh, take how much of our time you want but not more than 7 months for your first reading because you'll go back to the notes do qbank simultaneously give gts 1 gt a month initially 2 gts a month in my in your middle phase and uh, at last you can give 1 gt every 7 to 10 days don't give gt only from one platform give gts from all possible platforms so you'll have an idea of how they'll teach you in different ways and go for an integrated approach during your subject revisions so that will be very helpful for you you'll have a holistic approach concepts and uh, maro is definitely uh, enough for you to succeed in this you don't need anything else and i'm i'm super happy that the tech i'm a big shout out to the technical team and the developers and who's doing the queue bank and everything in the background the, the interface is like so so good and like i didn't really nothing really bothered me except the shake feature that could be changed that would be great but other than that super cool interface the queue bank is so good you have like three colored bookmarks you can make use of that if you have the mcq ids you can write that down in your notes so that you'll save time you have perks you have everything you need i, I don't i don't think uh, maro has definitely revolutionized the uh, you know pg preparation phase and in a good way you know and uh, finally don't lose hope wherever you are even if you're the last rank in in whatever exam you give there's only take it in a positive way give think that it could have been worse like you wouldn't have given the exam at all think of it that way and the only direction will go from there is like all the way up from there and there's like okay. this famous quote from the book from this book called uh, when you really really want something the, the the entire universe you know it conspires in helping you achieve it and and i think after this rank it, it was like super special for me because i really felt that felt that line you know and i like looking back at where i was and and like where where i've come here this is like super special for me because it's not that i want to become a topper i, I got a great rank but you know more than that it's like uh i wanted to really like uh, it's more of something like an inside thing for me like i really wanted to uh, like prove prove something to myself you know and i think uh, that's uh, yeah and i think that's what really So thank you for sharing a very relatable journey. I think so. A lot of people will associate with you after getting a not so good rank in the first exam, and then to turn things around. I think Dr. Arjun has beautifully highlighted his journey and a, a lot of a lot of things which you can learn from it. I think so. One more thing which he mentioned, which I want to reiterate, is that uh, you know priorities in life will depend on which phase of life you are in. and in this phase when your priority is to succeed and to get a good pg rank uh, don't worry about the dark circles and your diminishing friend circle as he mentioned they all will your friends will come back dark circles can go away but during this phase give it your all and if you failed once don't give up hope you can always come back stronger if you prepare well and you can also achieve a dream rank like dr arjun did Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Arjun. It focus, was a pleasure talking to you. Focus, perseverance. This is what will get through this. And if you are if you are watching this, you are a champion. You can do this. Go hustle hard. Thank you so much, sir. It's been a pleasure talking to you because you are someone I really look up to, and this is very super special for me. And thank, thank you so you. much for everything. And I might have missed out on a lot of aspects. in this video i'll try to make a different post and post it in one of the groups and one one last thing please i want to tell this that uh, yeah. everyone has that emotional support and uh, i think for me most of my credit goes to my mother she has been very very uh, special for me and uh, i think all of you need that support and even if you don't have that support you be that person for yourself and you'll definitely succeed uh, thank you so much this has been a pleasure sir yeah If you have any further questions for Dr. Arjun, please do write them in the comment section. Uh, both Dr. Arjun and me will do our level best to answer your questions. Yeah, I'll create a new account in YouTube. <laughs> You're all right.